Hello, I'm Rishi Dougal. I'm a psychiatrist working in Hamilton, New Zealand. And I'm David Mankus, also a psychiatrist, uh, academic, working for the University of Auckland Medical School. Hmm. So, Rishi, what's our paper about? Our paper is called Evidence-Based Medicine in Practice. And how did you get interested in that topic? Well, uh, really it was about uh, thinking about the limitations of evidence-based medicine and research evidence, David, and thinking about how we apply that to our patients uh, every day. So, um, is there a problem with that? I mean, evidence-based medicine has sort of taken over, hasn't it? It really has in the last few decades. It's, it's taught widely in medical schools. It's, um, it underpins many treatment guidelines around the world, but I think when you have a closer look at some of the uh, problems associated with it, uh, you find that actually it's, um, it's more limited than, than we've come to appreciate. So if it's been oversold, if it's been you know, pushed out beyond mm. where it should be, um, what do you think the, the main problem with it is then? Look, I think it, uh, its problems are um, partly to do with the research that's done, uh, which can be hugely biased in so many different ways. Uh, one of the biggest uh, forms of bias being funding bias. You mean like from drug companies? Yes, I, I do actually. And um, I see you've got a pen there, David. Um, uh, is that a drug pen I see? Well, uh, actually, no. This is, uh, this is a, uh, a pen from the Cochrane Library, which... Uh, no free lunches here, uh, a source of relatively unbiased treatment information. Absolutely, and, and I think that's one of the ways in which we can um, address some of the limitations of evidence-based medicine uh, by using unbiased sources of decision support. Um, uh, but there's, there's more to it than that. What else do you suggest? I think, so. I think we have to come to value practice-based evidence much more than we currently do. And by practice-based evidence, we are referring to uh, the evidence generated between clinicians and their patients in everyday practice uh, so that they can generate algorithms for that particular patient and I guess the, um, the ultimate being marrying the practice-based evidence with research evidence uh, ultimately to get the best of both worlds. And if uh, clinicians can do that, then presumably the patients will benefit both from both sorts of evidence. I, I think so, as well as... Um, because of uh, the patient input into the practice-based evidence, I think they'll feel more valued and it's a more collaborative approach to approaching patients' problems. Sounds like it might even improve treatment adherence. We're hoping that it'll have a number of different uh, benefits ac across the board in medicine. Right. Thank you, Rishi. Thank you. Good night.